because Hashem wills they should be in that place and at that specific time. And that a person doesn't realize how important it is just to make a bracha in that place. Just to make a blessing to God, to have thoughts of Kedusha, thoughts of holiness in that place, brings tikkunim for anything that might have been negative that happened in that place maybe 10 years ago, 20, 30, 100 years ago, you never know. Especially in Eretz Yisrael, there could be sparks and light in this place that has to be elevated. So I stopped the car and I thought I would take out this Mizonos that I received free in Moran. Went to Moran on the way to Carmiel. And I'm going to make a bracha. And who knows the greatness of making a bracha and maybe saying over a word of Torah in whatever place you're at. You have to stop a few minutes. Boruch atuad noi Eloheinu melech olam the Mark teaches us, and I don't speak enough halachas, and maybe I should start throwing some more in. But I'm trying to help people spiritually. Halacha you can find in many places. Whenever you eat, the halacha says, when you are brachas, you should sit down. You should sit down when you eat, because otherwise it's not healthy. Also, after you eat, you should have a little drink. And then the Gemara argues if you should have a drink first, or drink after, but I believe it, believe it concludes that it's a little better to have it after. So I'm going to tell a little story over. This Tana, but the Holy Magnet of Measures. I read this story on Shabbos, and uh, I, I can't, I couldn't wait to talk it over. I'll say it again. Once a very wealthy man became one of the students of the Magid. Magid was the disciple, I was going to say top disciple, but then that's, that's not necessarily so. Because he had the Holy Spirit, Yaakov Yosef, and many disciples of Balsham. But it was only the Magid who he entrusted to be the leader. And the main reason was because of humility and its ability to, to deal with the masses of people. Sometimes it takes a lot of different things, more than just Torah wisdom that the Torah Yaakov had. It takes a little bit more sometimes to be a leader of the people. And so, the wealthy man came to the Magh and he says, Since I've been your follower, since I've become your follower, I've become poor. I used to be a wealthy man. Is this the way? Is this what's supposed to be? So he told them, finally, that the Magid, I believe it's also tomorrow in Brachos, so don't quote me on that, that if you seek, if you seek wealth, you 
seek money, you go to the north, the farmer says. And if you seek wisdom, you head to the south. Right? So we know that the north is Kavura, is strength, which sometimes is the source of more Khalifa. We know that Chesed is from the side of kindness. And as we see, it's not from the south, it's not from the wealth. And so the Gemara says you can't be in two places. So it says, if you dive into a Shem's Moon Esrei, and you want to tilt yourself a little bit to the south, which actually would be this way, towards your Shlaim. Anyway, you want to tilt yourself a little bit to the south, and then you're going to draw in more wisdom and, and chachma and understanding your Torah. I mean, that's what we're here for, is to grow in spirituality. But then again, if you don't have anything from the north, you don't have wealth. If you don't have a little bit of the other, maybe you honor a little bit, you, you can't survive. You need a little bit of the north. But he's saying you can't go and break and draw from both places. Because sometimes you see you're really in trouble. Maybe you need to, you're holding good and spiritually, maybe you do it, you'll turn a little bit to the north, get a little bit from the, from the north, but you can't take from both. So, so he said, the follower, what am I supposed to do? So you're telling me I can't have any more money now than the follower because I'm drawing from, from your well of wisdom? Mug said, no, no, no. And this is the only time I've ever heard this explanation. This is what the beauty, this explanation shows the beauty of Chasidus. So the Mug responded, he said, if you're nothing, if you're nothing at all, if you look at yourself as being totally bitter, then you can draw from both sides. If you have no ego, if you're absolutely nothing, you don't really exist, and you can take from all. And maybe this is more of a, than just a lesson in money and wisdom, but in just general philosophy in life, if you make yourself as little, nothing, you get rid of your ego, your pride, you only for Hashem and for the other, for your people, by you so, if you're nothing, you're going to draw from tremendous amounts of chef, a tremendous amount of blessing in your life, in money, in wisdom, you're gonna have more friends, you're gonna make things happen for yourself and for the people of Israel. And so this is the Torah from stopping at the side of the road, making a bracha, and knowing that a person doesn't go anywhere without a top of the vision, and it's always easy to elevate the beauty of this world, to elevate around you and to find a shem in every single place. And of course we have a lot of help here. We have Eliezer ben Yaakov, we have Ben Ali and Shemayim. And maybe I'll come back one day and explain his life. silence when no cars are coming by here. I bless you, you should find Hashem in all places, in all things. And therefore your life, your, your life should be filled with light. All the best for you.